of automatically dealing with that instead of doing it one by one. And so um, I'll stop there. I'm sure there are others. Yeah. One of the ways to think about in, in terms of not just failures, but they're experiments, right? We have many experiments <laughs> across many different countries with how they've approached um, the, the governance of, of biotechnology. And now is the time to take stock of those lessons learned, but also can build the alliances. But I think those alliances need to be built on these big challenges, right? Where, where are we going? We need to transition towards more sustainable, secure, um, uh, and, and uh, resilient uh, platforms. And if we can begin to talk about biology as the, the opportunity to transition, that, that's what's going to be needed to, again, get, get past a, a fairly narrow frame. And maybe what we should work towards is rather than having a uniform set of regulations, one size rarely fits all, have um, a sort of a suite of regulations that are compatible, that, that create bridges rather than, than more, um, uh, more um, uh, walls and, and boundaries. There's, I want to make sure that we have time for questions from the audience, but there's one topic we haven't touched on which I think is hugely important in this context, and that is trust from the society, trust in biotechnology, in the innovation that we talk about. Where are we now? I think we all know where we are, but where, where should we be, be in the next you know, year, five years? And, and what's the best way towards ensuring that the society, the public, trusts these um, biotechnologies? Yeah, Go maybe I, I could try. But it, it, it is a combination of all we've said that's very interesting. I think it starts with the literacy on, on biotech. I think if, if our kids talk about biotech as, as they talk about digital revolution, uh, I think that's a huge step. And I think what you just explained is key. Secondly, this is not about policy, about regulations, about stories. I mean, we have plenty of those. I think it's, it's real evidence, real examples where we save people, where we save the planet. Um, and to your point on regulation, I've given up on, on the worldwide aligned regulation. It's not going to happen. I'm with you. Uh, let's, not, let's put our effort where we really see some benefits. So what we do see is that if you come with great solutions, so for instance, stevia as a, uh, as a sweetener, which is fermented via biotech, uh, and it's successful in one country, the other countries wake up and say, oh, hold on. And say, yeah, but listen, I mean, your regulation needs to change. Then it goes quick. So real examples are hugely important to create that trust, but then in full transparency. So no half stories. It needs to be fully transparent, and there the digital revolution will help us. We need to get used to get full transparency in a world where it's all about know-how and protection, etc. That doesn't work any longer. I like this uh, combination, riding on the wave of digital revolution to, to, to help this as well. Very quick comment, Megan. I think it's exactly this. Lead with um, actual benefits and values and then build the systems that ac actually can include everyone, mm -hmm. right? We have biology all around us. <laughs> it's an opportunity just like the digital revolution to engage everyone in the process of innovation and that is what engenders trust. Yeah, I think what you said earlier, Megan, is uh, let's say the ultimate goal, yeah, to have literacy yeah, in biology across, let's say, uh, you know, the entire civilization. Um, I, I think trust needs to be addressed maybe somewhat differently and it uh, goes a little bit quicker. You do not necessarily have to understand everything in order to trust. Uh, but you have to be convinced uh, of, let's say, your counterparts or your stakeholder environment uh, being genuine, which means uh, there has to be openness and, and, and transparency with what you said earlier, Dimitri. Uh, and from a company perspective, uh, that is something uh, that we have to deliver on. We have to open up, uh, we have to make some processes uh, that we are subjected to, uh, let's say, open for any stakeholder group that is interested because the very moment that there is an impression of, let's say, something happening closed door, uh, you know, behind walls and curtains, uh, people start to be suspicious. I think the regulatory process is a good example of that. Uh, we opened up the re-registration of one of our very important products for all stakeholder groups and say, hey, please come in. There's absolutely nothing that we have to hide and join us on the journey. We have to do more of that. All of the um, safety studies 
in our crop business have been made public. Yeah, you can access public summaries in order to, uh, uh, and quite frankly, uh, I'm an economist, I don't understand any of that. Yeah, so I could read it, but if somebody tells me, uh, if you want to go there, yeah, you can look at it yeah, and then find somebody who helps you limp along to understand it. You appreciate uh, the importance. It is, it, yeah. There's a lot of appreciation of that opening up and transparency, and we as a com business community, but also as a scientific community, have to do more of that in order to bring civil uh, uh, society along, because otherwise it's not yeah. going to happen, because quite frankly, we don't have our fair share in the public debate, That's and true. we are not necessarily the most credible constituencies. So we really have to step up in that field. Thank you. I'm going to turn to the audience. One question. Time for one question. Okay. Have a microphone here at the front, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Lemmy al Hajj, an associate professor of synthetic biology, genetic engineering. And listening to this panel was really inspiring because I, it reminded me of my PhD days when I was really active in, in research in this field. And the reason why I felt very strong uh, talking to the panel is that I come from the Middle East, and I saw the shift when I went back. Um, people are not aware of the, of the importance of biotechnology. We have a program of biotechnology graduates in the university, but as soon as they graduate, the market cannot absorb them because they don't know what biotechnology is. So they have job descriptions for biologists, and when they apply, almost 100% of our graduates end up in, in jobs that's got nothing to do with biotechnology. And I'm afraid with time, we're going to, be, we're going to start losing that passion for a very important industry. Yesterday I was in the, the session with Bill Gates, who emphasized the importance of, of biotechnology and, and synthetic biology and nanotechnology. What advice can you give me as a professor in the university, Sultan Qaboos University, in order to help our students and our graduates? I'm lucky because I'm an academic, so I still have my job. Uh, but what can, I, what can I do to help our students and our graduates? Become so a politician. We, there you go, become a politician. <laughs> We're going to have to take this question as a comment, yeah. really important comment. We have come to the end of our session. Thank you so much to my panelists who are engaged in an active discussion, and thank you to all of you. Thank you.